Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peter Likes Books. And today, PP wanted to join me. He said, can I do a review with you today, Dad? I said, sure, can I have a kiss? He said, I love to read Danielle Steele and Nora Roberts. He's so happy that I have picked up a few James Patterson books. I have actually, I picked up two James Patterson books because I want something that's just kind of like escape and not have to be real deep. So the other day I went into Half Price Books and I bought the first Michael, I think it's Michael Bennett, the first Step on a Crack is the first is one that I bought and the other one is a standalone. So if you guys like, I know that most of you out there probably don't, but if you like James Patterson, could you put in the comment section below like what are some of your favorites? I've read a lot of the Alex Cross ones way back in the day, so I would prefer a standalone if you have a suggestion. Okay, but that's not what this is about today. Today, this is about my review of The Cabin, at, can you see it? The Cabin at the End of the Universe. And um, I was actually recommended to read this book. So I read this book for Spookathon. It was my thriller that I read. And um, Kayla from Books and Lala, hey Kayla, she recommended for me to read this book. Um, she actually gave me like a picture of all of her 4.5s that were thrillers. And she was like, I liked all of these. And so I saw that one on there and I thought, oh my gosh, Boo Radley wants to be up here too. He said, dad, I'm important too. Yes, Boo Radley, you are too. So now he will sit up here for two seconds and then he'll hop over there with his brother Tucker. That's sitting on the ottoman watching me like I'm a live TV show. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I, um, I thought I had heard of it before, I had like seen it, and I think I actually opened it in an unboxing, but I have looked everywhere in this house and I can't find it. So I may have given it to my best friend, I don't know. But anyway, um, so the cabinet at the end of the world, did I say universe? I said universe. Cabin at the end of the world. I think I've said universe and like all of the times that I've mentioned it, I've said universe. Cabin at the end of the world by Paul Tremblay. Okay, so let me go in here and read to you this book. Now I will tell you, for even though I can't remember the title of this book, my best friend always, she'll tell me about a book and she'll be like, it's so good. And I'll say, well, who wrote it? And she'll say, I don't remember. And you know I'm not good with author names. And I'll say, well, what's the title? And she'll say, well, I think it has something to do with a beach or a seashell or a mermaid, something with the ocean. I don't remember. <laughs> she never remembers the titles of books. And then I'm like always hanging on, like wanting to read this fantastic book, but then she can't remember what it is and she's already given it away and she doesn't remember who she gave it to. Okay, the Bram Stoker award-winning author of A Head Full of Ghosts adds an inventive twist to the home invasion horror story in a heart-palpitating novel of psychological suspense that recalls Stephen King's Misery. Are y'all watching The Haunt? Boo Radley is digging back here now for a hole in the couch. Are you guys watching The Haunting of Hill House? Oh my God. It is so good. If you guys like paranormal stuff, it is so fantastic. It is so well done. I love it. I've got an episode and a half to finish it. And then I'm going to do my whole review on my review channel. Now, I went out of this damn thing. What did I do? Okay. Um, the Bram Stoker award-winning author of A Head Full of Ghosts adds an inventive twist to the home invasion horror story in a heart-palpitating novel of psychological suspense that recalls Stephen King's Misery, Ruth Ware's In a Dark, Dark Wood. I wouldn't say it reminds me anything of her writing whatsoever. And Jack Ketchum's cult hit The Girl Next Door. Although Jack Ketchum is a lot like Richard Lehman and they're kind of like very, very dark, this is more, I would say, psychologically and almost like apocalyptically is that even a word, apocalyptically? It's kind. It's very apocalyptic. Um, <clears throat> a girl next door. Seven-year-old Wynn and her parents, Eric and Andrew, are vacationing, are vacationing at a remote cabin on a quiet New Hampshire lake. Their closest neighbors are more than two miles in either direction along a rutted dirt road. One afternoon, as Wynn catches grasshoppers in the front yard, a stranger unexpectedly appears in the driveway. Leonard is the largest man Wynn has ever seen, but he is a he is young, friendly, and he wins her over almost in, intensely. Er, he wins her. I can't talk today. He wins her almost. He wins her over almost instantly. Leonard and Wynn talk and play until Leonard abruptly apologizes and tells Wynn, "None of what's going to happen is your fault." Three more strangers then arrive at the cabin carrying unidentifiable uh, un menacing objects. I need my glasses, my readers. As Wynn sprints inside to warn her parents, Leonard calls out, your dads, won't, uh, your dads won't want to let us in, Wynn, but they have to. We need your help to save the world. Thus begins an unbearably tense, gripping tale of paranoia, sacrifice, apocalypse, and survival that escalates to a shattering conclusion, one in which the fate of a loving family and quite possibly all of humanity are entwined. The Cabin at the End of the World is a masterpiece of terror and suspense from the fantastically fertile imagination of Paul Tremblay. Now, I listened to this on Audible, and I don't know why on this review, but it says length, 9 hours and 25 minutes. It also says up here that it was narrated by Amy Landon. So, 
if you are looking for a very good audiobook, I would tell you this as well as the one in the window and behind her eyes were probably my three favorite audiobooks of 2018 so far. This was really well done. I think it plays out as an audiobook fantastically. Um, I don't want to like tell too much about this book because the thing is, is that it starts off and you believe it to be, um, it was so funny because at the same time that I was reading this, um, uh, Kayla and Shannon that I did the Spookathon with this year, they were like messaging me and DMs and saying like, oh, I hope you really like it because we really liked it. I loved this book. And in fact, on Goodreads, I gave it five stars. And you know, I don't really usually do that. If it's anything like 4.5, I always give it, you know, like a four star or whatever. Um, I gave this five stars and I'll tell you why. Because I thought that, like I felt like I was in suspense the entire time. People have asked me what my one problem is with this book, okay? And the one problem I have with this book is that I don't love the ending. But I don't hate it either. And this is the thing. I don't know how the ending could have gone that I would have been happy, if that makes sense. Like, the tension in this book builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up. And honestly, when I sat down to read it, I really thought it was going to be a home invasion book. I thought that would, would be the end of it. And then it ups the ante, right? And it becomes about something else. And then you kind of get used to that. And then it ups the ante again. And then again. And then again. And it's like, it just is so well done. And it just, it, like, reading it, just, I don't know. It's like you feel like you're in this cabin. Honest to God, you do. And um, you it, it, to me, was such a visual book. Like, I could honestly see it as a movie. And, in fact, I was talking about it on another video on here or on my vlog or something. And somebody in the comment section said that they thought that it had been optioned um, to be made into a movie, which may be true. I don't know. I could, I could easily see this book as a movie. It would play fantastically as a movie. And the thing is, is that it very much reads as sci-fi kind of it reminds me a little bit of like sleeping giants and by sylvain nouvelle and it also reminds me of dark matter by blake crouch which was also in um kayla's book pile i already read that so i was like oh we kind of like the same things i loved dark matter by blake crouch and if you've read it he was also the guy that wrote wayward pines before they turn it into a tv show it's like the real world meets sci-fi, but they describe it to you. It's, I wouldn't say sci-fi. I would say, like, not sci-fi, but science fiction, if that makes sense. But they explain, I don't know if that, if you guys understand what I mean by that. I mean, it's not like spaceships and all that kind of stuff. But it, um, they break it down in a way that's so easy to understand. Like, I was never once confused reading this book. And when I'm reading a book that I get confused in, I don't like it. Um, it the fear factor of this book is incredible. You really have no idea of what's going to happen literally up till the very end of the book. I mean, the last paragraph. You have no idea how this book is going to end. And the thing is, is that <clears throat> because of the way that I like books to end, you would think that I liked the ending of it. But it just didn't, I don't know. Like, the buildup tells you, like... I don't even know how to explain it. It's kind of very much like an adult choose your own adventure, so to speak, if that makes sense. If you've read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like an adult choose your own adventure. Um, but like, let's say if you are reading a choose your own adventure and it says in there, you know, go to page 456 or go to page 470 and you went to both of them on the end and they were blank. That's kind of how I felt reading the end of it. Like there was all this buildup of how like the book was going to end. And then I didn't feel like any of the options occurred and I was confused and I don't know if that's because they're going to leave it at Paul Tremblay left it open for a second book which I highly highly doubt I really struggle in believing that this book could have a sequel to it I, I could be completely wrong but I think this book as a sequel would kind of diminish what happened in the original um I think that it needs to be a standalone and stay that way. It was just so fantastically done. The story was beautiful. I mean, beautiful. It was scary, but it was beautifully done. And the relationship between uh, Wynn and her two fathers was fantastic. And just, I don't know, everything about it was, it, it felt like a tie between literary fiction and science fiction, apocalyptic kind of literature. Um, and it just, like, I was intrigued as much by the characters because you literally get to know seven characters very, very well. Very, very well. Um, especially when and her fathers, but then the people that come into the home, you get to know their background story as well, which is very interesting. And the way you find out is interesting as well. So I don't know. Like, I think that this book needs to be a standalone. 
I would highly recommend this book to anybody. Like, if you love thrillers, go out and get it today. You won't be disappointed. I think I read it in two days. Like, literally listened to the whole thing in two days. Like, I, it's, what, nine and a half, it says nine hours and 25 minutes or something. So I listened to it at two times speed. So, I don't know, four or five hours. Um, I listened to the whole thing in like a day and a half, two days. It was so good, I didn't want to stop listening to it. And it's been a long time since I found a book like that. So, if you guys have other recommendations for thrillers that I can't put down, please put in the comment section below. But I would highly recommend this book. I would give this book, honestly, because I think there are some really great life lessons in this book as well. I would give this book a 98%. It was that good. It really, really was. And um, I hope they make it into a movie. It was fantastically done, and I think it would translate into a movie so well. Um... I could see when the little girl, like I visually could see her as I was listening to the book. So if you've read the book, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Don't spoil it for anybody else. Just put your comments of if you liked it, if you didn't like it. Um, I'd be interested to know what you thought about the ending of that. Um, and I don't think that just saying that would really ruin it for anybody. So let me know what you think. And um, the rest of the week I will be doing reviews of the other books that I read in Spookathon. Um, happy November 1st. It's now the Christmas season. Not really. But anyway, I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.